Hi and welcome to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be discussing how to integrate Google Sheets into your Next.js project. This is super adaptable to other languages if you want to use Next.js and TypeScript or you want to do this similar in Node. But in this video, I'm focusing on Next. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go over to your Google Drive and create a Google Sheets for you to actually read from. You probably already have this created if you're watching a video, but I'm just going to call this, let's say, Docs. This is going to be my title here. I'm going to say, whoops, Alice, Bob, Carl, Dan, and Emily. Let's say those are my five docs and I want to read this onto my website. The first thing I'm going to want to do is go over to councilcloud.google.com and this is the first page that you're going to see. If you want the link, the link is in the description below so you don't have to search it up yourself and just agree to the terms of service. The first thing you're going to want to do once you arrive at this page is to create a project. The reason we're doing this is because Google Cloud has a really nice Google Sheets reading API. So you need to just create a project and invite it to your Google Sheets in order for you to use that API in your project. So I'm just going to call this Google Sheets project click create and it's going to take a while to load it's fine and google's pretty known for doing its stuff quick so it'll low up just like that afterwards you're going to want to go to the search bar and search up google sheet api and it's going to be this first one with the api symbol here because well we're using an api so Go ahead and enable it. And this will just enable it throughout your project. And then once it is good to go, it's going to take you to this page. At this page, you're gonna to want to go to the credential section, click manage service accounts and create service account. So this account is what is accessing your Google Sheets and what you're going to be using inside your project. So I'm just going to call this Google Sheet Reader Wiz, just so I have something a little bit cool in there. Just click OK and continue. You don't need to do any of these optional steps. And then we have created an email account. You might be wondering, why do we have an email here? But just copy it anyways and go ahead, go to your sheets and share it. This is where the email comes in. You're going to be sharing it with the email that is inside this service account. So, okay, perfect. I'm going to share it with the Google Sheets. I'm not going to notify, but it doesn't really matter because this is created from Google anyways. And then you can click share. So now this uh, Gmail or this uh, account will have the ability to access your Google Sheets. And then you can scroll further to the right if you want to look at something else. But we need to now be able to access this account from our project. So in order to do that, we need to create a key. So just click Manage Keys, create, add key and create new key, make it adjacent. And it's going to go ahead and download it onto your computer. You're going to want to go ahead and drag that key into your project. I'm not using this anywhere else, so I don't really care if you see it but you obviously don't want other people to see it in your project. So if you push this to Git, go ahead and also add that to your Git ignore. I'm gonna rename this to key just because it's way easier for me to reference. And 
that is really it in terms of our Google Sheets. Now we need to create some sort of code inside our Next.js project in order to access this Google Sheets. It's going to be using that through this key, which is the service account or the account that has access to our Google Sheets. So in order to do that, go into the API folder, create a new file. It can be named whatever you want. I'm just going to call it sheet.js. And that's it for now. Now, in order for this to work, you're going to have to obviously install a package. So do npm install and the package that does this is Google API. You're just going to obviously click enter and it's going to install in your project. If you use a yarn like my project did when I created this by default, you can go ahead and start doing npm install just to yarn add. And then you can see that I'll add it to your project. This next step, writing the code, is pretty standardized between just using this API with just a little bit of customization. So what I'm going to do is inside the description below, you can copy over the code and then edit it according to your needs. So this is the code. I just pasted it in. And then I'll go ahead and explain what this is but it's just easier for you to copy it over than writing it from scratch. This first line is the API that we're going to be using. That's what we just imported. The key is this key.json. So what you're actually going to want to do is update this to where you stored it. I just stored it in the main project directory. So that is going back to folders because we are in the API. And it is called key for me. So just rename that to key. And then you can keep this the same. Inside your API request in, in or inside your API handler, you are going to create a client. A client is basically the account that is accessing the sheets. And that account email and account key is based on this key.json. So that's why you have to import it. Then you need to allow your account, which is that email, to have access to your sheets. So that's why you authorize it. And then once you're inside this authorization function, you can return if there's an error. You don't really need this, but it's nice to have for a backup. And then this is saying that you, inside this account, you're using the Google Sheets API. It's a little bit complicated, but if you go back here, you notice that you can actually import multiple APIs. So in this account, we are only implemented one API, but you can see that there's so many that you can add, which is why you have to re-specify that you are using the Google Sheets API. And uh, so the Google Sheets API is what you just imported, and also you're authorizing this client. This is actually the stuff that you are going to worry about. So I'm just going to write here customization from here because this is really what you will be dealing with. The spreadsheet ID, if you go back onto your spreadsheet and you hover over this URL, I'm just going to paste my URL inside my project because you can't really see it is this part inside the URL. So just cut that out and paste it here inside quotation marks. You can also put it in your process.env. Doesn't really matter, it, especially if you're making this a public project, I do recommend that you make it process.env. This next part is where you want your data to be read from. So if you go over here, you'll notice that my sheet is called sheet one. So over here, you want this part to be the name of your sheet. So I'm reading from sheet one. This is the range of the data you're reading from. So I'm reading from A2 to A6. So it'd be A2 to A6. If you want to read the entire column infinitely, just write A2 to A, and that'll read everything infinitely after A2. 
I'm going to delete this. This is going to get the data from this specified range. And then what I'm doing is that I'm just returning it here. So now we're done with our second step, which is creating a sheet reader in order to get that data. And then lastly, we need to be able to access it from our code. So in order to do this, you just do it like any other API. So just go over to the bottom of your project here and do export async function get server side props. And this is going to get data from the server, aka your um, API folder. So what you're going to want to do is fetch the API. So I'm just going to do localhost 300 slash API slash sheet. She is the name of her API folder here. You're going to get a request from that, similar to any other fetch method. And then you're going to return the props of what you want it to be called. I'm just going to call it sheet data of res dot here we call it data. So it's going to be res.data. What we're doing here is that we're fetching the data from this sheets, and then we are returning it as a prop into our function here. So we can call it as a parameter. So this is going to be sheet data. And then now you can access it within your code. I'm just going to delete all this default code. So I'm going to remove this footer here. I'm going to remove this div here. All right, I'm going to remove this paragraph. And I'm actually just going to see whether I can just, inside this header, print out sheet data. Let's test out to see whether this works. I'm going to do npm run diff. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my local host. And you notice that there are some errors. And let's go ahead and fix these. So my first thing is that I just want to make this HTTPS localhost. And we notice that. And it looks like I just spelled it wrong. So. That is the updated URL. And then you're going to notice that now it reads onto my screen. So I really hope that this video was helpful and see you in the next video.